Hello, I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be talking about whether video games can treat ADHD. Um, I will be talking less than 20 minutes. If you have questions while I'm talking, certainly you can post them, and I will answer them at the end of this time. This will also be posted up on YouTube, and it will be on Facebook later today. And thank I thank all of you who've filled out surveys about the content or future content of what you'd like to see in these Facebook Live presentations. Um, there's certainly welcome more input on that. There was a variety of answers. It sounds like people do want me to talk about research, which is going to be here, as well as practical tips, as well as some maybe more philosophical topics. Um, so again, today is going to be a video games for ADHD. So in June of 2020, just about six months ago, the FDA did approve a game called Endeavor RX um, for specifically treating kids in the age group of 8 to 12 with ADHD. This is a prescription-only product. It's a product that you need an iPad or iPhone to work with. And essentially, it's a multitasking video game. And this is a pretty significant um, declaration by the FDA because it's the first time not just that a game was approved for treating ADHD, but that a video game was approved for any indication. Now the group that developed this project or this this game is called, and I may be butchering the pronunciation, Akili Interactive. Um, a University of California San Francisco professor. So I, I actually had no awareness of this till I did some research. He's you know, literally just a few miles from where I live and work. Dr. Ghazali has spent um, a few decades now doing basic science research. Um, he has appointments in neurology and psychiatry. So he's doing basic research using technology, using game technology, using sophisticated brain measurement approaches to try to develop essentially video games to improve not just the brains of people with ADHD, but a whole host of conditions, including autism and Alzheimer's, and looking to improve functioning in normal people. So to boost all of us to our maximal um, intellectual, maybe emotional capabilities as well. So again, this is significant. The FDA has never before approved a game for any indication. Keeley, I guess, does have other projects in the works that will soon be they hope approved for other indications. Um, so important to know right off the bat, the FDA has a very well established, extremely rigorous, um, extensive protocol for getting drugs approved. So there you have to do tests in small numbers of healthy people to um, prove that it's safe. Then you do larger scale tests in much bigger number of people, not just to show that it's safe, but to show that it's clearly more efficacious than um, a placebo control group. And if there's, and hopefully it's big enough and long enough to catch any adverse effects or side effects or problems of treatment with this substance. The approval for devices is much less rigorous. Um, it's much more, as they say, skewed towards the industries that either make medical products or including now video games. Um, so less extensive data is needed to show that this is okay and not harmful for kids. Um, so again, there are studies and I will actually go into some amount of detail to the study, the main study that was used to approve this product. So a little bit more, um, there, the the group behind this product has done other studies. I had trouble, for, it sounds like most of them have not been fully published. So in their claims, they say that some of their video game products have been um, shown to improve multitasking ability in individuals, improve working memory, improve aspects of attention, improve memory uh, ability to shift attentional focus, so flexibility and attention all of which would be great things to have for helping people with ADHD. The sort of FDA and or, or indications were to suggest that this may be part of treatment for children with ADHD. They are not proposing or suggesting that this is 
um, a game that's just going to make all medications and all behavioral and therapeutic interventions unnecessary. So this is not just throw your kid in front of a video game and your ADD is going to be gone. This is intended as part of a more comprehensive program, but and I'll now launch into a little bit more about how they tested it. Um, when they actually tested, so, so the kids they tested this in were in the 8 to 12 year old group, about um, three quarters of them were boys, or two thirds, three quarters, and were six, 70 percent. Um, about 348 kids were actually in the official study that I saw posted, more were screened, um, so the kids had to have ADHD on standardized measures. Not only did they have to have ADHD, they had to have performances on the TOVA, and I will get to the describing the TOVA in some detail later on. Um, so the TOVA is a test of variable attention. It's a test that was developed um, probably 40 years ago almost, and is available in a couple of formats, but it, it's a objective measure of attention. And so kids had to be deficient in this measure of attention to get into the study, which is, if, if you're not showing deficits to begin with, it's harder to show improvement for an intervention. But that also may mean that this is selectively, we don't know how representative this is of the whole ADHD population. So it's particularly kids with inattentive aspects to their ADHD. Um, there were some kids who were on medication before the test, but that was not a huge group, and they were actually required to stop their medication several days before the beginning of the test. Now, the test was to teach them how to play this video game and then to have them practice playing the video game. And the practice was five sessions a day, five days a week for four weeks. So that is 100 sessions. That is more than 40 hours of video game playing in a four week period. That is more than two hours a day, every weekday. Um, some encouraging things that they made the game fun enough and interesting enough. And, and I had trouble finding out exactly what the game is, but the descriptions are that it's a video game using again an iPad or iPhone framework that involves multitasking. So two different tasks are going on and, and you're being trained to sort of focus on the important task and not distracted by other variables that are ongoing. But so the encouraging thing is that they had about 83% compliance. So even though this is a lot of testing, a lot of time on one video game, and the video game is a progressive one so that you, you know, it gets more difficult as you get better at it. It's not just a static, do the same thing over and over again. Um, so 83% compliance, particularly in a group of kids with ADHD who can get distracted or frustrated or just stop playing for other reasons is a pretty high rate of, of continuing with it. And at the group level, there were robust differences between the group of kids so that the control group was given a different video type game which was had not been designed to improve attention. Um, so at the end of the study looking at the TOVA again which is an objective way of measuring several different aspects of attention. Um, the group who got this Endeavor RX game or played this game were measurably better as a group than the placebo group. This was a double blind study, so kids and their parents and the researchers, nobody knew which treatment group a kid was in. Um, in terms of how well individuals did, that's a little less, um, I would argue, less impressive than the, than the very robust group findings in the TOVA score. So the individual findings, and I'm scanning my notes quickly, I'm not seeing it right in front of me. Um, was something like 35 to 40% of individuals met their criteria for substantially improvement on the TOVA, so on, their, on their attentional score, but about 25 to 30% of kids in the control group also improved on their TOVA score to, to a range that was considered good or within normal range. Um, so what does that say? One is that there is a placebo effect um, and, and or a reversion to the mean that, that kids were doing better in both the control group and in the test group. 
again, it, it was a robust statistical difference that many more kids in the Endeavor RX game group improved, but large numbers of, of by this of, of, of normalizing your TOGA score, um, more than half of the kids didn't reach that criteria for substantial improvement. So, I mean, that's not surprising. None of our treatments, medication, behavioral, anything in any branch of medication work absolutely for everybody. So this is a robust finding. Um, other strengths of the test, of, of, you know, of the study, was that it was a multi-site um, investigation. So it wasn't just one group of researchers in one place. So it was generalizable and that they didn't find gender differences, site differences in terms of success rates with this. Um, they also did some rating scores, and at least on some rating scores, parents um, of the kids who had the Endeavor RX game or played it, um, there was a slightly more of those parents thought their kids were doing better with attention measures. Um, a group kids' self-assessment was also higher, although the statistical significance looking at the groups wasn't robust there. Um, but on the formal scale, there's an ADHD rating scale, the rating severity of the ADHD ratings overall, there wasn't a difference before or after. So this brings up, and again, I will go into the TOVA details in a minute, but one of the big questions of, because there have been other groups with other projects or products, both video games and biofeedback um, tools and protocols, where we're able to demonstrate people have improved on a certain laboratory test situation. But the question is, is this generalizable to real behavior in real life? And I'd say the ADHD rating scale not changing substantially either says maybe our rating scale isn't capturing what's significant or meaningful about severity of ADHD, or again, maybe this narrow improvement in a certain ability isn't that impactful for changing someone's life with ADHD. So a little bit more about the TOVA, the test of variable attention. So again, it's a test that was developed, I believe, in the 60s. And it's a fairly simple in concept and design. There's lots of people who have their slight versions of it, but there are standardized criteria for doing this test. The test is as simple as using a computerized apparatus, flashing a two different targets in, se in s sequence, so just one at a time in front of a person. If it's the target item, you know, if it's a and often it's a square with a square superimposed at the top of it. If it's a target, this person's supposed to click. If it's not the target, if it's the wrong thing, the non-target, the wrong thing, the, the respondent is supposed to not give any response. Um, the first half of the test is sort of the boring situation test where there's fairly long pauses and that the majority, three and a half times as many of the items shown are the non-target. So most of the time the person is withholding and not responding and sort of waiting every three, four times. And again, these are randomly distributed to, to click on the target. The second half of the test is sort of a more stimulating um, situation where the ratio is reversed. So three and a half times as many targets in this one as non-targets. So the person's clicking more often because they're seeing the target what's being so there's the, the standard version is a visual test on the computer but there are also auditory tests where one tone if you hear you know a high note that's the target you're supposed to click on and if you hear the low note then you're not supposed to you're supposed to withhold a response and the same first half the test is boring lots of non-targets don't click on that second half lots of targets supposed to be clicking and there's certain measures so the omission measure is how often the person is missing because they're getting bored with not seeing the target and just completely missing it when it flashes on. So the omission rate is how often you're missing that target. And that's a good measure of attention. Um, the commission rate is how many times you make an error. Um, you hit the non-target when you shouldn't have because you're over eager and jumping. So that's used as a measure of impulsivity. 
Um, there's also standardized ways of measuring the reaction time to see how quickly and attentive people are, and also the variability in reaction time to see how um, whether people are drifting off in terms of how attentive they are with time. Um, and there's also measures of once someone's made an error, and we talked in one of the previous talks that parts of your brain are monitoring whether you're, make, whether you're making errors, whether you're even consciously aware you made errors or not. Um, but there's a post-error um, response rate measure to see how well your, body, your brain is tracking whether you're making mistakes and, and how much you're delaying in response to that. So again, the TOVA is a pretty standardized, um, widely used objective measure. What we still don't have a good handle on, though, is how well it really captures what's important for kids with ADHD. And again, clearly the Endeavor video game product showed robust improvements on the TOVA for a substantial number of kids, not all. But the big question is, how well is this going to translate into real life working improvement in the lives of kids with ADHD? Secondary question or issue is how long does this, I mean, if you do your 40 hours of video training, have you improved your brain for life on the TOVA test or maybe in the bigger world? Is it an effect that wears off with time or so far studies don't show? much information one way or the other. And other issues related to this is every intervention we, we make has side effects. People often don't think of, of asking about side effects for you know, biofeedback training or psychotherapy for that matter. We often just focus on the evils of medications, which many of them, particularly stimulants we do use for ADD, have certain risks of very some serious side effects. So the, the group studying the Endeavor project, Endeavor video game, did ask about side effects and pretty tiny numbers of people reported issues with frustration, headaches, dizziness, and, and low is less than 5% of kids. Dizziness, more aggression, a vague emotional reaction. Um, one of the research involved in the study though points out that and this wasn't formally measured as a side effect, but one to think about is, he said that they made the game so fun and compelling, it's hard to get kids disengaged from that. So one question is, you know, if you're training kids, and again, this is a pretty considerable invest to other issues with the study is, you know, does your kid really have two hours, two plus hours every day for a month to spend on a video game rather than on homework or rather than on games he was already playing in light playing or rather than running outside and playing in a you know, safe environment and getting some exercise. So this is one was a considerable time investment, but I mean, we, we talk a lot about the addictive potential of stimulant medications, but are we actually in a better place? And I'm not saying that we've shown this, but let's say we invent video games that are really good at treating ADHD, but they're so powerfully addicting that kids are spending hours every day of their lives for years after playing these wonderful video games. I mean, I don't think it's likely to be that severe or that bad, but maybe for some kids it will. So we shouldn't dismiss the idea that our non-pharmacologic interventions may have side effects, including some serious side effects. So that's a about all I have to say. So again, the, the, the summary is test this product that's out there does have benefit on measured variables of attention. How well that translates to improving kids' real lives, we don't know yet. It doesn't prove that it doesn't. It's just harder to establish that, particularly from what's been published so far. And a few other sort of warnings about this study is that this was a fairly, I mean, this is not going to be an intervention that everyone has access to. Kids need an iPad or an iPhone right now. Kids need to have, you know, two and a half hours a day for a month to put into to practicing this. So, and again, this was being posited not as a standalone item, but as a part of a comprehensive medications and or talking therapy for treating ADHD. 
So I'm not seeing any questions showing up. Um, certainly you can post them later. I will be back next week. And the topic next week is much more philosophical, but hopefully some science as well, about why don't we have a cure for ADHD. So stay healthy, stay sane in this strange world, and I'll be back next week.